Hello, Jim Hodges and Samson here. Samson's a three-year-old black lab who came in for our residency program. Good boy, he's just used to doing things his way. He's three years old, as I said. One of the things that we're trying to do is teach him that nothing comes for free. He needs to earn his place in the pack. We're gonna be the leaders, he's gonna be the follower. He's done real good. Just had a few bad behaviors or behaviors that really need to be addressed, smelling the ground, uh, pulling on the leash, barking, doing things like that. We've addressed those in, in our meetings. Now the thing is, is to establish the leadership. That's the purpose of the video, is to show you my hand signals, give you an idea of what I'm doing when I'm working so you can do the same thing. Uh, you're gonna notice that I'm gonna praise him. You know, praise is important. Motivation is also important in the consequence form. Consequence can be a verbal no, a tap of the leash, it could be a tap of the shoulder, it could be grabbing the snout. In our case with Samson here, what we're gonna do in the video is typically a tap of the leash. It could be a little bump, but most times tap of the leash. When we tap the leash, it's not designed to hurt him, to intimidate, to dominate. It's just to communicate with him in his language which is physical language, it's not a verbal language, that we're in control and what he's doing is not what we want. After we bite, we always come back and praise the resultant behavior if we get him to do what we like. Having said that, our goal is to praise him 20 times more than we ever bite or provide a consequence. And the other thing is to make sure that uh, when we tell him to do something, he's got to do it. So we never give a command unless we're in a position to know that he's gonna do it or we can make him do it. These next few weeks are gonna be so important as far as establishing leadership. As I said, he's a happy guy, he's a good boy. He wants to do for you. You just have to lead him. The other thing about Samson is he's tremendously treat motivated. And to me, in this case, I throw out so much treat oriented that he gets so sidetracked that he forgets to do obedience or anything else. I don't mind using treats. I'll use anything that can help motivate a dog. That's just like with praise. But what I will not do is use treats all the time with him. If I do give him a treat, it's because he did a command perfectly. If he did it halfway, there would be no treat. I would especially use treats right now on the recall or the come commands. Anything else is up to you. Just be aware that if the treats sidetrack him, he doesn't get it, and we provide a consequence if necessary. Watch my hands, listen to my tone of voice, and we'll go through the commands. Hey, buddy, you ready? Got a cat over here to the side or something over here to the side that he's watching today. It doesn't matter. When we start working, he has to pay attention and do what we ask. All right, Samson, let's go. Atta boy. Good boy. So our let's go is a loose walk. No more pulling. No more smelling the ground. If he started to smell the ground, I would tap up and tell him, no, let's go. And then praise again, out of boy, when he's doing what we want. I like him to walk beside us. The reason we walk beside is, is when he gets out in front, he's leading the walk. And also, he's out of our jurisdiction, so to speak. He doesn't feel our authority. And he's more apt to do something wrong. Does he always have to walk beside us? No. But right now, until we're firmly entrenched as a leader, I like him here, so you can be a good checks and balance. Let's go. If he started to pull out in front of me, I would tap back towards me and tell him, no, let's go. If he started to go that way, I would tap over here. No, let's go, and then praise at the end. While we're doing the command and, and he's doing well, we want to be upbeat and let him know. Let's go. Good boy. That's a good boy. You're my buddy. So that's the let's go. We turn, we change, we go. Okay, it's wherever we want to go. We're the leaders of the walk. Sit. Good boy. Now, one of the things with sit, he doesn't like the gravel too much, and one of the things we've seen is he'll flop on the sit. Remember what we talked about in our training. If he flops, it's no, no, sit, till he sits correctly, then we come back and praise. Again, the consequence is not designed to be hard. We've talked about that. They're just light, redirecting taps. We only get harder as if he ignores us, which he has shown to obey us and do what we want. Hand signals like this, if he popped up by the sit, I would tap straight up above his head and tell him, no, sit, and then praise, okay? If break, if break, release command, it's just like that, break, hand signal. If he does something once, he's gonna do it again. 
So don't feel bad if you make a mistake or he makes a mistake. Remember that situation. Go back and work it because he's going to go back to that point of missing those commands on a conditioned basis until we change it. Let's go. Hear my tone of voice. Let's go. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Good boy. I'm proud of you. So we got set. Good boy. Yes, sir. Yes, we want some loving this morning. Now the DOW in from the side. Down. Good boy. Hand signal by the side. Down. And a boy. Good boy. Sit. Good. Now sit. I had him sit back up. Remember my tone of voice. Remember what I talked about. About encouraging him with your core, your spirit, your soul. Right. So down is from the side like this. And whenever. Sit. Down. Now, if he did not down just then, I would have taken the leash, pretend like this is his head, and no, down. So why did I tap that leash then? Because he was smelling the ground. It's so moist this morning, it's wet, and that brings the odors up to the ground. He wants to check them out, especially with us working with other dogs here and cats here. But still, down means down. It doesn't mean smell the ground unless I go stay. Now I've told him to pack his bags to be there for a while. Palm out, stay. Now he's there. He can smell the ground. He can roll on his side. He could chew a bone in that situation. Now back to what I was saying. If he did not down for me, or if he downed and popped up, I would, here's his head, I would take the leash and tap. No, down. And then good boy afterwards, okay? So it, remember what I said before, if he messed it once, he may pop up again. That's probably one of the biggest things that Samson will do, especially if treats are around or anything like that. He'll do the command and he wants to pop out the command to give him treats. Remember what I said, we're not going to give him treats for that reason, okay? So now he's in the down. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. He can be there in the down stay 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes at a time, okay? He's easily done a half hour down stay. We do what we want. We move around, we do whatever. If he gets up, we take him back. No, no, down, stay, and start the uh, motor running again. The difference between down and down stay, down is we tell him down, he needs to be ready for the next command. Down, stay means you can pack your bags, you're gonna be there a while. Break. Atta boy, let's go. So now I just did it from the side. Sit. Nice, sit. Good boy. Yes, sir. Down. Hand signal in front. Good. Now I allow him to be a little slow like that. You remember when I said earlier he's not real crazy about the gravel? Doesn't matter. He's got to do it. But uh, I'll allow him to get down as long as I see him moving. If he really started to stall, what would I do? No, down, okay? So now he's in the down just as before. He's not in the STAY portion. Break. One of the things I'll do when I break is I'll take a step back so he'll come to me and I can pet him and love him. I'm trying to subliminally teach him that I'm the center of his universe, okay? Now I'm doing these commands. We could go from down to sit to come. There's no uh, definite order that you have to be in. It's important for him to pay attention and do what we ask him to do, okay? So now we have DOWM from the front, from the side. We have, uh, we have the uh, SIT, we have the BRAK, and the let's go. Let's go. Ah, boy. Next command is the play. Ah, boy. Now one of the places, get on your bed, lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book. I don't care what he does as long as he stays on his bed. He can easily do this for an hour or two, okay? Now, one of the things about Samson is, is he likes to sit in that. You know, uh, you asked me the other day, does he not know he can lay down? I'm not 100% certain. If we wanted him to lay down, we wouldn't give him that command, but if he was sitting there for a while and didn't lay down, we would go, okay, come on. That boy, good place. And that's how we can start to teach him that place means lay down. Personally, I believe, and we've seen, he may sit for 15, 20 minutes, but eventually he'll lay down on the place command, and I praise him for it, okay? So again, hour, two hours, easy. This can be done at dinner, at uh, 
family time. Whenever you want him to get out of your hair, but you be in charge, you can put him on the place. I personally have beds throughout my home, okay? And I can put a dog on a place at any time. Great, that's a good boy. I'm proud of you. Sit. Another command I like. All right, so now we have the flop. No, sit. Good, did you see what it did? Just the, no, no sit. Come on, buddy. That's it. Atta boy. So little taps. He said, what the heck? Well, by now, he knows when he's flopping. And we just started this a few days ago. A little tap till he got his rear end set underneath him, okay? So now he's in that sit. If he flopped over, it'd be no sit. Light little taps. Not like if he missed a command where we went straight above his head, okay? So now we're going to do the heel command. The heel command is where we've got an imaginary box beside us. It's his job to stay in that box, our job to keep him in the box. It's really great for real tight crowds, uh, places where you're trying to maneuver around other people. You put him in the heel and we keep him in that box. The thing about heel, which is different from let's go, when we stop, he should sit automatically. So hand signals like this, heel. To give you an idea, we stop, go sit. We're gonna do it again, heel. Good boy. Heel. So when he does mess up, guess what? We're going to repeat that a couple of times. No sit. Heel. Good. Heel. So we do it two or three times till he gets it right. He knows what to do. Good boy. Heel. Good boy. One more time. Heel. I normally tell people if our dog messes up, we come right back. Good boy. And repeat that command two or three times till he gets it right, okay? When we stop on the heel, he sits. He's in the sit. We can step off. He has to stay there, okay? Break. Good boy. Another thing is... Uh, he is allowed on the furniture at home, if, but you're thinking about taking it away. If you decide to take it away and only allow him to get on the furniture at certain times, you should give him a command to get on that furniture, and you should tell him break or get off when it's time to get off. We use this command of getting on the stump for dogs to get in vehicles or to load up on the furniture. Okay, come on, load up. Good boy. That's a good boy. Good boy, I'm proud of you. Last thing is the recall command. The recall or the come command is very important. We want to teach him to want to come to us at all times. When our dog's running around in the yard, most people have gone through this and we tell him to come and he sees a cat or something else and ignores us, what has just happened? He's just learned that that word come means nothing. So we've got a guy that's really, really treat motivated, okay? So what we want to do off leash is never tell him to come right now, next two or three hundred times, never have him come unless he's already committed to coming to us. You say, man, Jim, that's sort of crazy. No, it isn't. When he starts to run to us, he's usually got a reason. He wants to see us, he wants a treat, wants a toy. And when he's in the act and is committed to come to us, that's when we're gonna give him that command. And when we tell him that come and he gets to us and we pet him and love him and give him a treat, he starts to associate that word with many good things. Of course, when we have him come to us, we never punish him, we never discipline him, we never do anything that's negative on the back end. Even putting him up and you leaving to go out for a while could be reason enough for him not to trust the come. We're gonna do come and it's always gonna be a positive payoff for that day when you need him to come, he's gonna be entrenched in doing it. He's gonna have done it so many times, he wants to come to you. And quite honestly, after a period of time, a dog wants to come to us anytime. When you're out walking around the backyard, he comes up to you. Inside, when he comes up to you, pet him and love him, make him be interested in you. So now we're gonna to try to emulate that, uh, or simulate that uh, off leash. He's not paying attention. 
I've loaded up the treats, and you're going to see him change once I give him a treat. That's why I haven't given him any to date uh, in this session. But watch what happens. Samson, hey, watch out, right here. Come. Good boy. Treat, gentle. If he got too crazy with it, break. That's one of the things we've worked with, and he's a little piranha to get the treat. Uh, you have been using the word gentle. We have as well. And I'll open up my hand and give him the treat, and he can take it out of my hand. If I give it to him like this, there's a good chance my fingers could get snapped, and that's not good to have children around. Guest children, for does it just matter for your family? Let's go. Do it again. So you, one of the other things I did right there is to help motivated him, motivate him, I started backing up with him. And that just got him wanting to come to me even more. Remember, we're playing a game here of him wanting to want to be with us, and we make it his worthwhile, okay? Hey, buddy, right here. Come. Good boy. Treat, pet, love, and a boy. Break. We're creating associations across the board. Now, another way to start teaching on that come command for off leash through Pavlovian conditioning is on leash come. On leash come is a, a lot the same. It's just now we have him on a leash. When we tell him to come, he comes and he sits. If you go back and look at the video, you'll saw every time he came to me, he sat. That's a result of us teaching him on leash what to do. Sit. Good boy. So, and we use treats for that if you want. You don't have to use them forever, but we do want to make that a happy uh, situation where he wants to come. That and walking on the leash are probably the two biggest obedience type behaviors that I have requests for. This is a way to start making this happen. Being the leader in all other forms of obedience also helps in teaching him to come to us when we need him out in the yard, okay? So off on leash, you see he's ready because of the tree, okay? But I've got my leash, I'm gonna take my hand, come. See my hand, he sits. I've got the leash. You noticed I took the leash out of the way. Good boy. Break. Atta boy. So, what, once we've been giving him treats for a while on the off leash and on the on leash uh, come commands, then it's time to not give him a treat sometimes. And then gradually you get to the point where uh, half the time, three quarters of the time, you're not giving him a treat is still very important. Even a year from now, two years from now, he's out in the yard and he doesn't know that you've got treats. You don't have a treat bag on. You haven't been working him uh, on a leash. He has no reason to uh, recognize that we're in an obedience session. He's just out there doing whatever. Hey man, come. That's such a good boy. Good boy. Break. You notice that even after I praised him, he remains seated. That's from obedience, okay? So it's just a, a good way to meld the two together. Of course, you know if you ever have any questions to let me know. Your children can do this, you can do this, everybody can become his leader if you'll just make it a point of not giving a command unless you know he's going to do it or you're in a position to do it. Notice that the taps, there's nothing there that bothers him. We're not here to hurt him, that's not what it's about. It's about leadership, okay? When we feed him, uh, we ask him to obey a command for his food. When we love him and he comes up and wants to be petted sometime in the house, maybe what you do is give him a command and he does it, good boy, and you reward him with petting and loving. It's real simple, it just, it just means that we're changing the way we think. Work it, work it, work it. This next uh, four to six weeks to 12 weeks are so important. I tell all my clients to try to work with him 10, 15 minutes inside, 10, 15 minutes outside every day for that first couple of weeks. Why? Because it's important. He knows I'm the leader. Now it's important for him to understand that you're the leader. And by giving him obedience and being able to anticipate his reactions to praise him if he does what you want or bite if he does it, he starts to learn that you are not only mentally but you're physically the leader of the pack. Jim Hodges, 336-945-3232. You can call me anytime you need me. Uh, forever, as long as God will have me here, 
you want a follow-up, we do a follow-up. I have other people that can work with you if I'm not available. But we want you to have a great dog. And guess what? Samson's a good boy. And he's done real well with us, and he's a happy guy. We just want to make sure that uh, we control what's happening. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Good boy.